one on the list, but for all the wrong reasons. Baltimore has the worst homicide rate among the nation's big cities. That's according to new crime data released by the FBI. Well, Mary, just months ago, the USA Today named Baltimore the most dangerous city. Now the city falls on top of the FBI's list. With 342 homicides last year, Baltimore beat out other cities like Detroit, Philadelphia, Mary, even Chicago. Halloween is the one day of the year when ghouls and ghosts roam the streets of Baltimore, but what if they've been here all along? It's the perfect night for all things spooky, and this right here is Edgar Allan Poe's tombstone. It's one of several locations in Baltimore believed to be haunted. Paranormal experts say Baltimore is one of the most haunted cities in the country. Police are at the scene of a double shooting in Hawkins Point. Right now, we know that two women, ages 20 and 19, have been shot at that scene on Fort Armistead Road. We're working to learn their conditions right now or whether police are searching for any suspects. We'll, of course, have those details for you when they become available. Our tour of the scariest, most haunted places in Baltimore starts at Fort Armistead. This is a notorious abandoned location known colloquially as the Baltimore Catacombs. This is a place where locals will warn you not to visit at night. Lots of crimes have been committed here, and it's rumored that a number of people have been murdered within this cavernous complex. Join us as we investigate and head deep into the darkness of the Baltimore catacombs. Is there another tunnel? I love Dew's pouch flute, snort cocaine, fuck Trump, crack rocks. Oh, I love crack. <laughs> Hell yeah. I spray painted that on there in 1987. So it's still here. Glad that you're coming clean. Lots of, uh, lots of very. This is a very offensive time. Brandon was a big dick. This was, was, has a big dick. I'm glad Brandon now is part of this tunnel system. Proud of you, Brandon. The light just died. Oh. Look at it. It's 100% went out. Let me see. On camera, it went out. <sighs> well, fuck me, I guess. It's absolutely eerie out in those woods. And let me tell you, the scariest part of all is that you never know who might be lurking out there in the catacombs. Now, I'm not afraid of no ghosts. I'm afraid of someone armed with a weapon. Oh, you want to head in? I literally almost walked on right into that. Oh. I wasn't looking, I was like, oh. <laughs> People online are not gonna understand how close I am to this spider. Let's <laughs> get an inch.
Okay, so I'm here now with Rick Sarah. He's on Dan's channel all the time. They are partners in crime. They do a lot. Of what was that? I don't know. That was like right where you just were back there. Yeah. You know? Okay, anyways, so Rick has been here with us tonight. Dan is now back watching our stuff. And it's just Rick and I investigating deep down in the bunkers, tunnels, whatever you want to call these structures. We're going to run a spirit box. Uh, if you guys haven't ever seen Rick's channel and his content, please go check it out. How do you feel about this place? This is your first time just like me. Apparently there's been maybe some things that have happened at the hands of uh, a human where maybe a couple of people have unfortunately been killed in this park, maybe not even related to it being a military reservation years ago. But that's the only story I'd heard and that was from Dan. Is there anybody here trying to communicate? Did you hear that? It's like a breath just now. I thought that was you. No, that was not me. Come I on, it was right in my left it. ear. Yeah. It came from over here. Did it? I heard it like. Do you want to do lights out? We heard a noise. What was that from? Is there any person here with us? Do you feel like getting a little colder? Cooler. Just It's slightly. like maybe a... Uh, Airflow just came through. Mm -hmm. But that's the first time I felt that. Even when Dan and I were walking, I didn't feel that. Hello? Is there anyone back there? Are you back there? If you're down there, could you knock on something or move something? Just let us know that you're here with us. Well, let me turn this on. Let's do the spirit box real quick. So my name is Rick, and this is Colin. We mean no harm. We just would like to communicate. I have a loud noise from that thing, yeah. I didn't catch it. Why are you here? Why? Can you tell us a name? Come on, you can use this thing to help you to speak. I don't hear any change in it. It's literally not reading anything not even a blip if you are here with rick and i once again we're inviting you to come out and speak with us could you please use your voice to just say hello or hi any sort of a greeting well you want to get out of here okay What? There's a naked man walking through the park. What? So as you saw there, Dan saw a man dressed only in his socks walking around the exterior of the fort. And seeing that so late at night in the pitch black, we knew we had to get the hell out of there. I never saw the guy, but Dan swore in his life that he saw him lurking right there somewhere in the shadows. 
Now, Baltimore has a very close connection to the infamous Ouija board, and you know I had to go visit the place where Ouija was given its name. It was here in 1890, 529 North Charles Street here in Baltimore, where Elijah Bond, the original patent owner of the Ouija board, supposedly got the inspiration for the name Ouija from a board session he had in this building. He used to serve as a boarding house, and he actually lived here back in the day. And there's a plaque inside commemorating that event to this day. Let's go take a look. It's really crazy to see, but the Ouija board was actually named inside of a 7-Eleven, or what's now a 7-Eleven. And hidden behind some displays of food is a plaque dedicated to the fact that the Ouija was named here. Apparently, during one night of using the Ouija board, the Ouija named itself. A spirit or an energy guided the people playing the game that evening and told them it wanted to be called Ouija. You'd never know if you were shopping in that 7-Eleven. Here in the Baltimore Harbor, the USS Torsk is actually known as one of the most haunted boats. There's actually a couple of boats docked here that are supposed to be haunted, but the storied history of the Torsk actually is what makes it the most haunted boat here, in my opinion. Nicknamed the Galloping Ghost of the Japanese, the Torsk is actually a ship that served along the Japanese coast in World War II. A sailor is said to have died when the ship submerged underwater and he died in a drowning death, and his spirit is supposedly lingering around the upper decks of the vessel, looking hopelessly to get back aboard the ship. It's crazy. Okay guys, so I'm gonna include this clip in here. This is when I visited the Gundry Glass Asylum in Baltimore, and I tried to explain it on camera, but the audio was just too windy. Basically, I went one night with Dan Bell. Um, I ended up losing the footage due to a, a card corruption, so I don't have the actual footage of this happening, but this is a story I've told like everybody that knows me. I was gonna go into the building. It was raining, thunderstorms, the shutters were clapping on the old asylum, and it was about three or four in the morning, and Dan Bell said he was too tired to go in. He said, just go for it. And I'm like, you want me to go into this abandoned, infamous children's asylum alone? He's like, yeah, if you want to. And so I decided for you guys, I, you know, had to go do it. And so I mustered up my courage. I walked over to the big opening entrance to the asylum. I looked down inside and there was the corpse of a desiccated cat just laying there like a mummified cat. And so I immediately got bad vibes and Dan, immediately starts screaming at me, come back to the car, get back to the car, right before I went in. I went back and we looked up in the window and there was a guy smoking a cigarette in the window. Dan told me he knows this guy. Apparently the guy who lived in that building was an ex-patient of the asylum. It was an asylum specifically for children, for youth. And the, uh, when the asylum became abandoned, this guy was kicked out onto the streets and then he moved back into the building. Now there are videos on YouTube of this exact same guy chasing people out of the building with a Bowie knife. Dan himself has even captured the guy in his own videos exploring the building, his shadow in the background of some shots as if this guy was just stalking him around the building. And so I like was so freaked out in the footage, which I'm so mad that we lost you could clearly see the guy standing there smoking a cigarette just standing and staring at us through the window and dan said he knew 100 that was the guy but unfortunately the old asylum burned down i think a year or two ago so it's no longer there but i just felt like i had to include this clip because that was a very very scary experience the closest i've ever come to being like stabbed or like chased or attacked in a building yeah i don't have the damn footage but just know that that happened and that's like, in my opinion, the scariest thing that I've ever had happen to me while filming. Initially we planned to come here at night last night, Dan and I, and when we, we walked around the whole building trying to find a place to get in and Dan didn't want to go in. Dan saw a lighter inside the second floor. And like we explained last night, there is supposedly people have seen this person and been almost attacked by them an ex-patient who lived here at this hospital. Like a t-shirt up like drying as if someone's doing their laundry. I would, I would kill to go in there. I didn't even notice this ripped up jacket on the ground right here too. That's fucked. I understand leaving a jacket, but how's it become ripped up? Than nice day, right? And look at that, brown. Yeah. A bunch of shit on this jacket. Of course, when discussing Baltimore's haunted and morbid history, 
we couldn't forget talking about the master of the macabre himself, Edgar Allan Poe, who called Baltimore home and died in Baltimore. If you don't know, Edgar Allan Poe was an American writer, poet, editor, and literary critic who is known for a number of different works, including his infamous poem, The Raven, and short stories like The Mask of Red Death. All of Poe's works involved death and sadness, gloom, and that's why he's become a gothic icon. But Edgar Allan Poe's life itself wasn't so happy. He was a troubled artist and battled alcoholism and mental disease. Edgar would eventually marry his own cousin, Virginia Clem, and after her death, Edgar became erratic and turned to the bottle on most nights. That's what gave him a lot of his inspiration, but would ultimately lead to his mysterious death. Now, like I said before, Edgar Allan Poe died in Baltimore, but let me just show you a little bit about what people had to say about him after his death. They weren't exactly the nicest in the newspapers. Take, for example, this clip from the newspaper. Edgar Allan Poe is dead. He died in Baltimore the day before yesterday. This announcement will startle many, but few will be grieved by it. Now, when Edgar Allan Poe died, he was found in clothing that wasn't his own. He was rambling hysterically and shouting out for a man named Reynolds. To this day, no one knows exactly what caused Edgar Allan Poe to die, but we set out to try to solve that mystery ourselves. This building right here, the church home and hospital, is actually where Poe died. And they believe that he died right here, collapsed on the street right in front of this hospital. Now, there are reports that Poe has been haunting the grounds of this now abandoned building. We can't go in and look for ourselves because it is private property, but it is a very cool old building, and it is the final spot where macabre mastermind Edgar Allan Poe took his final breaths. So we're standing right now at the grave of Edgar Allan Poe. Obviously, he's one of America's most infamous writers. And a reason why we wanted to come here to do a little mini investigation is because Edgar Allan Poe himself died in a very mysterious way. Still to this day, people don't really know the exact reason for his passing. When he died, he was actually found on the streets wearing clothes that weren't his. One of his final things that he said to his physician was the name Reynolds. No one really knows what that means. There are theories that he may have been murdered, bludgeoned, he may have been suffering from alcohol withdrawals. He was also hallucinating. So it's a very strange thing, the death of Edgar Allan Poe, but here we are. If there's a place where he's gonna be, it would be here or his house that we're gonna stop by later too. I love old cemeteries. I mean, this place has some really, really old headstones here up to like 1700s, like mid 1700s. So, I mean, this place is really cool. A lot of history, a lot of uh, important figures from Baltimore are buried here. So I'm ready to get going. It's also cold as hell. Yeah, <laughs> as per usual. Some pretty cool old graves. There's a vault under here too, which is interesting, but you can't get in there, the public's not allowed. Downtown Baltimore. These are just kind of eerie right here. The doors. Yeah. Almost looks like a like when they cremate a body. A founding father. Interesting. I think it's about time we go find Mr. Edgar. Edgar Allan Poe. Mr. Poe? Yes. Here he is. Edgar, don't know if you are uh, obviously here in this area or not, but we would love to try and uh, talk to you somehow. We have a tool or a device that we should be able to hear your voice with, and right in front of your grave, this little metal thing, if you come touch it, it'll show us that you're here with us. All right, Edgar, are you here with us right now? Whoever's here with us, can you tell us your name? Nancy. Nancy. Now, on the surface, this may not seem like that strange of a response, but when you look up Edgar Allan Poe and his tumultuous romances, you'll discover something strange about this response on the spirit talker. At one point, Edgar Allan Poe was in love with a woman named Nancy Richmond. 
While they didn't officially ever date or fall in love, it's known that Poe and Nancy had an entanglement. This is a picture of Nancy. So, I don't know. Was Poe's spirit with us asking for Nancy? Or was someone else from the grave talking about her? Here's a letter where he mentions her, proving their relationship was real. Interesting. We want to know if Edgar is here with us. Edgar Allan Poe or Maria. Who's here in the cemetery right now? We want to figure out how you died, Edgar. Mr. Poe, was there some sort of suspicious activity that happened when you died? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Edgar. So you were murdered, right? Or maybe you were murdered? Huh, it's almost his birthday. He was born January 20th, it's January 15th. Wait, isn't Jenny a nickname for Virginia? What? <laughs> okay, that's kind of weird. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Jenny is a nickname for Virginia. And uh, right here, Virginia Clem Poe. <laughs> the love of Edgar Allan Poe's life, Virginia Clem Poe, died before him. And it was Virginia's death that really sent Poe down a downward spiral. Could it be that Virginia was coming back from the grave and speaking with us? Or was it Poe himself? So maybe it's not Edgar that we're talking to, but Jenny's here. Yeah. And she could answer that he was murdered or something. Jenny, can you tell us what happened to Edgar? We just want to know the truth behind his death and what happened to him. Playing. Playing. He was playing around, or they were just playing around, or? That's so weird that that was his wife. Mm -hmm. We got her name. Victoria. Victoria? Okay, Edgar, we just, we want to know what happened to you. Or Virginia, you can talk to us. What happened to Edgar? Okay guys, so we're gonna do a DR60 now. This is a voice recorder. It's pretty noisy out here, but we're still just gonna see if we can pick up on anything. I personally don't think this area is gonna be super active because it's just a grave site and it's so old. You know, it's been hundreds of years since he passed. Let's do this. Edgar Allan Poe, can you tell us where you murdered? My bones. On top of the grave? On top of the grave, my bones. Who is Reynolds? Can you tell us who Reynolds was? Did he kill you? Was he trying to help you? Was he a friend? In one word, can you just tell us what happened to you? I don't think you died a natural death. Or if this is Jenny, can you tell us what happened to Edgar? Yeah, nothing. It's too windy. I mean, we're downtown right now. It's windy. The, the DR60 is a sound activated device. So basically we're just picking up on way too much to properly be able to do this. Do you have any final words? We're about to go, Edgar or Jenny. Did you die a natural death? No, I didn't. Okay, that's a ominous yeah. way to end. You asked if you died a natural death. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Well, for like a 30 minute little video, interesting. Two different times it seemed like it was saying no, you know? All right, so when we were driving up here, we passed by like 15 cops probably. Yeah. 
in a row. You like SWAT cars? Yeah, SWAT cars, tons of police officers. And that's because 0.2 miles from Edgar Allan Poe's house, I have the Citizen app. It's a great app for crime updates. Um, shots were just fired in this area somewhere. Like, you can see right here, officers can canvassing hospitals after shots right here. But I also think that one's not even reported what just happened here. That was, this one was yesterday. There were shots fired last night right here. Yeah, that one hasn't been reported yet. But there's like 15 cops there. Well, I want to look at the house. So I just looked up that street right there, West Saratoga. People get shot and killed there literally all the time. Here's one from 2021, 400 block of West Saratoga Street, which is right that we just passed by. Then 2020, a man killed in West Saratoga Street shooting. Then 2017, 22 year old man dead after shooting on West Saratoga. Look at this, these are 15 year old shot, downtown Baltimore shooting. This area is kind of violent. Well, let's go look at Edgar P. So this was his house back in the day with the red top. It almost got torn down. Yeah, they almost tore it down. Then they started the Edgar Allan Poe like Historical Association, and uh, they were able to save some money up and keep this building as a historical landmark. It's kind of crazy, dude. Personally, I feel like if Edgar Allan Poe was gonna haunt anywhere, it would be his old house where he wrote so many of his works. And this was his last residence here in Baltimore. Well, that's it. That is all. That's all she wrote. That's a wrap on Baltimore. That's it, man. Cut. Oh, baby. They're not visible with the naked eye, but some say their presence is real. Ghosts roaming the halls of iconic buildings. This historic building, it was opened in 1928. Walter Arias at the Lord Baltimore Hotel says guests sometimes get a visit from a ghost named Molly. The lights started flickering, flickering and then the next thing you know, um, I didn't think too much of it. Then the music turns on and then the elevator starts opening up the doors. The next thing you know, I'm like, it must be Molly. Legend has it that Molly was a little girl staying at the hotel in the 1930s. One day she came to play here on the 19th floor where she died. And the story goes that she didn't know exactly where she was. The ball went over the building and next thing you know, she accidentally jumped over the building. Adia says Molly's spirit never left, so the hotel is embracing its past with a drink named after her. Marty joining us from the Lord Baltimore Hotel that is believed to be haunted. We have seen several instances of it this morning, Marty. Well, you just missed one of the instances of it. We put that ball on the floor, and during your introduction, the ball just rolled. Am I lying on it? No. Hey, two. Yeah. That's right. Hold on, Kate, you come on out here real quick. It's pretty important. The Lord Baltimore Hotel on West Baltimore Street is ready for Halloween. Built in 1928, it has 428 guest rooms, but some of the guests here never check out. I have the haunters. Ghosts, three in particular. General Manager Gene Addis says the Lord Baltimore was the tallest building in the city during the Depression. The story goes one night after a party dressed in their finest, a man and woman jumped to their deaths along with their seven-year-old daughter which is Molly, a resident child, and her parents. And she is often seen wandering the hallways, her parents dancing in the ballroom, Molly playing with her red ball in the hallway. And when they see Molly, they usually see her with a red ball. A red ball. I cannot explain the red ball, except that she's always with a red ball. I have calls in the, in, on record in the middle of the night that can you talk about this girl in the hallway? Can you call and find her parents? There's someone running down the hallway. I have people who call and say, someone walked through my room last night. Can you check the lock? There was a woman standing in my room. In fact, here's a comment from guests who stayed here on October the 12th. They had seen Molly playing with the red ball and it reads, it genuinely spooked us both. I couldn't sleep that night. I know there's nothing you can do about this situation. And it goes on to say, except for the ghosts, they had an excellent time. But that's not all guests have reported seeing. Remotes move or disappear. TVs go on and off. I have an elevator that rides from the 19th floor to the lobby, to the 19th floor, back to the lobby. It opens and closes. There's no one on it. Elevator number two. 
and we live with it. I have housekeepers who will not go in the guest rooms. I have two that quit because they were so tired of being chased by Molly. So, what will you see at the Lord Baltimore Hotel? Well, hopefully a great hotel with a few little extras on the side. Think of them as amenities. <laughs> Going up, Jennifer Franciotti, WBAL-TV 11 News. Guys, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, we just got to the Lord Baltimore Hotel. Yeah. Most haunted hotel in Baltimore, apparently. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of celebrities have been here. Amelia Earhart, Babe Ruth. Martin um, Luther King is, Jr. Babe Ruth, it was, this is the last place he stayed at in Baltimore before he passed away. Amelia Earhart attended some like aeronautical conventions here. So it's uh, supposed that this whole hotel is haunted, but especially the Sky Lounge on the 19th floor. I love staying at a hotel yeah. that's haunted. Me too. We're on a little haunted vacation yeah. right now. We <laughs> did uh, the haunt, uh, Laurel Haunt, uh, Haunted House. We're doing Leakin Park today, and then we come and spend the night in a place that's haunted. Yeah, we so. can't escape. No. Just wanted to take this out. I mean, look at this. Hotel. This is a spacious room for a ghost hunt. Am I right? Yeah. So, so me and Colin are both going to sleep in that bed. <laughs> this is our bed. This one open for the ghosts to come yep. stay with us. This is equipment and ghosts only. <laughs> Over here, we'll be snuggling. Yeah. We got, look at this. Nice little welcome. Ooh. We got custom sheets. I feel like you never see that in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Looks yeah, looks not. bougie, huh? Look at that thing. postcard. That's pretty cool. Let me see it. Damn. There she is. And... No Bible. No Bible. <laughs> demons. It's gotta be demons. Get a nice little picture of the hotel here. No mini bar? No mini bar, sadly. Here for the grand tour, you got this kind of eerie closet. Yeah, we opened the we opened the room and this is all we saw and we're like like what the hell? What, the what are we walking room? into right now? Oh, just a nice little closet, safe. Yeah, there you go. Ghost closet. Well, <laughs> we're gonna do some ghost hunting in here, man. Spooky dookie room. Yeah, I'm gonna take a massive spooky dookie in there. No <laughs> doubt about that. I'm gonna tear that thing up. Oprah Winfrey. I'm glad they specified that these are Google search results. Really nice then. <laughs> here we are. Oh, that's more. My hair is like really frizzing. Oh. Okay, everyone, so. It's uh, it's almost 3 a.m. here in our hotel room, and it's it's creepy in here, isn't it? Very. <laughs> yeah, we we've been setting up the devices, and they've been going off like crazy, like crazy man. levels. So I'm gonna turn on over here the REM pod. Let me turn the music box over here. Molly, we're trying to talk to you tonight. If there's a little girl named Molly here, we would love to talk to you. We have all these little toys you can play with. You've been playing with them, I think. If you see any of these lights in here, right next to my arm, over there by the lamp, or in front of the door, all you have to do is walk up and touch them, and we'll be able to see that you're here. That's so fucking weird. The music box was just going crazy too, mm -hmm. off camera. Now it's silent. Molly, is that you? All right, Molly. Thanks for coming in here. Okay, I'm gonna reset this one more time. I think it's crazy. We have the heat on in here and it's freezing cold. It's freezing, dude. We were all, all night we were out at Leakin Park. So if you want to watch that documentary, we were in the most dangerous part of Baltimore all night. And uh, it was cold, so we came in here and cranked the heat up all the way. And it's still freezing. Okay, Molly. If you're here, 
just use your voice and uh, talk to us. Tell us something about yourself. Are you uh, a little girl? Molly? Maybe it's her parents, dude. They're supposed to be here too. Can you step away from that light? <gasps> okay, step even further away from that light, please. Come on, come towards us. Is this room oh, freezing? It's f freezing cold. <gasps> What the fuck? Dude, that's a massive REM signal. Okay, Molly, I think we're gonna have to shut that off if you can't stop playing with it. Can you step away from it? Step away from that light on the nightstand? Okay, Molly, please come towards us. Visual. Yeah, we'd like to see a visual. Come on, yeah, step away. You can come mess with one of these ones over here. They do the same thing. This one right here? Edward. Huh. Edward. Edward. Reset this again. Studio 60. I'm sorry, Mom. All right. What the fuck? This isn't motion sensor. Mm -hmm. It's not me setting this off. That's weird. Isn't that? That was a great action shot. Just <laughs> <laughs> trying to show that. All right, Molly. Desperate. Mm-hmm. Are you desperate, Molly? What are you desperate for? We're just gonna ask you a few questions. Dude. Literally, what the hell, dude? I'm like, here's the thing. If people are gonna say, oh, like, it's because it's on the nightstand. There's, like, electricity over there. If there, if that was a... And if, the temperature. If that was the case, it would non-stop be going yeah, off. Yeah. E even like if we reset it, it would just turn yeah, back on. Immediately. And then the temperature wouldn't turn different. We have the temperature set to 74 degrees, and it feels like it's getting colder. Sarah. Sarah. That's really f weird over there. So what's weird is Molly... Her spirit is supposed to be obsessed with this red ball. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big thing. It's in news reports. The REM pod is essentially a, a little red ball. You know? Didn't her parents jump? Yeah, her parents jumped from the top floor. Damn. Okay, Molly. We want to talk to you. Can you use your voice and speak with us? All right, Molly. We're gonna to try to listen to your voice. So try to speak with us, okay? What is your name? Between. Molly, when did you die? Is this Molly we're speaking to? Bones. I guess, yeah. Tell us your name. Did you die here? Yes. Okay, so, do you like coming and talking to people who stay in these rooms?
Are you over there by the safe? Watch out. Is there something evil here that's going to try to attack us? Is that what we need to watch out for? floor in this hotel, the famous floor. I say we go up there. You want it? Yeah. Finish this out? Yeah. Okay, man. It's what, uh, 3.30? Almost 4. Amelia. Amelia, Amelia Earhart. Earhart! We just talked about that, too. She stayed here. You said that on the video. Yeah. Yeah. She was here. Maybe Molly saw her. Going to the 19th floor. Haunted elevator. All right, Molly. We're up here on the 19th floor. If you're here, if your parents are here, we just want to talk to you. So can you speak with us? My name's Colin. My name's Connor. Molly? Are you here with us? Where are you? Molly, is it true that your parents took you with them when they jumped? Door. We heard you like to chase the staff around in this hotel. Is Anna. That... We've gotten Anne twice. No, Anna. Hmm. Is that true? You like to chase the staff around in this hotel? Roberts. Molly, can you can you tell us where you are up here? We're good people. It feels weird, but you notice up here it doesn't feel cold like our room. No. Did. Super fucking cold. Even though we have the heat on 80 now. Yeah. It's still cold. Yeah. Molly, I think you like us. Could you make a noise or something and let us know that you're here up on this floor? Hello. Why are you still here? Of this 
place. That's when they all did, yeah. Which was obviously a struggle. Over there. Yeah. Move there. Okay, one more time. Maybe you're not Molly. Can you just clearly say your name for us? Same recording. What the? Fuck? It's almost 4 a.m. Do you want to walk around the floor once and then go back to our room? All right. Molly or Anna? Where are you right now? Can you let us know? Anna, is that you? We keep hearing you, but we don't know anything about you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, this is the haunted floor. This is where you're supposed to be. Who are you? What the f Did these all just turn on? <laughs> the moment we walked here. No way. All these hallway lights just turned on the moment we walked down here. These aren't motion censored. These all are on. That's kind of weird, isn't it? 
Did you just turn these lights on? Finally, it's late. Do you have anything to say to us? Anything you'd like to let us know? Okay, first of all, what the fuck? The lights. Like, honestly, all these lights are on. Were they off when we walked over here? They were. We wanted to come down to listen so that we can actually hear it. All right. Molly or Anna? Where are you right now? Can you let us know? We keep hearing you, but we don't know anything about you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So Connor and I wanted to make this like a 10 minute investigation just to see if this place is haunted. This place definitely has something going on. Like what the f dude? Yes! Like that and then Good. goodbye. And then in addition to all of that on this, I mean you can take the DR60 how you want to. Your pick something up. Is all going crazy? All three of them, the music box before we started rolling. And the fucking lights, dude. Upstairs, on camera. Flicked on. <laughs> We're right there. There's 100% something <laughs> up with this place. I mean, if you watch our Leak and Park documentary that we just filmed tonight, it's also something to add in there that the lights in Leak and Park were, were fucking with us. Mm -hmm. So to have something like this happen here is just, it's weird, dude. I don't know, but it's... <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's 4 a.m., so thank you guys for watching this little mini investigation, but I hope we did this place justice. And Molly, thanks for chatting with us. I hope you or have Anne. a... Or Anne. Or Anne. Yeah, there's a whole thing to explore with that, too. But it feels weird in here, doesn't it? We turned it up to, what, 80? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 70 right there. Yeah, 79. Cold. It's fucking freezing in here. But thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Maybe we'll be back soon. And thank you to you all for watching. But uh, for a short little video, this was uh, not, too not bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's 4 a.m. Jesus, man. We got to go to bed. It's 4 a.m. But as always, stay, stay spooky. spooky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>